Welcome to the Local Domination Podcast, your ultimate guide to get local clients fast. Featuring interviews with local marketing and lead generation experts who will show you exactly how to attract local clients and dominate your market. And now, here's your host, Doran Aldana. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of the Local Domination Podcast, your ultimate guide to getting local clients fast. This is your host, Doran Aldana, and we have yet another superb interview for you. And today, I am interviewing our special guest expert, none other than the one, the only, Roger Bodwin. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Roger, he is the CEO of Restaurant Rockstars, an online company specializing in restaurant, hospitality, and resort staff training to increase yield, sales, profit, and guest service. Roger also hosts the Restaurant Rockstars podcast. Love that name. So Roger is a successful restaurant entrepreneur who has founded and operated not one, not two, not three, but four restaurants slash hospitality companies over the past 18 years. He recently sold the Matterhorn Ski Bar in Maine. Sounds like a fun place. It was a rocking place. <laughs> I bet. A seasonal restaurant and bar that generated over a million bones in sales in just four months. So this dude knows what he's talking about, as you're about to see. While running the Matterhorn, it was named Best Ski Bar USA. Best in the U.S., baby. That's something to tout. By Ski or Skiing Magazine and Classic Ski Bar by Ski Magazine, as well as receiving restaurant accolades from the New York Times, Boston Globe, Frommers, Travel Guides, Power Magazine, Powder Magazine. Powder Mag, yeah. Yeah, Powder Magazine, Yankee Magazine, and other publications over the years. Uh, furthermore, if that wasn't enough, Roger is the founder of the Sales Star Server Training Program, author of Rockstar, pardon me, Rock Your Restaurant, and is a game changing guide to restaurant finances and creator of the Restaurant Rockstars Academy. Woo wee! This guy's got a whole whack of experience in the front lines of capitalism. He's about to share some of his best golden nuggets, insights, and wisdom with you today. So without further ado, Roger, thanks for being with us, man. Wow, that's a great introduction, Dorn. Thank you for that. You're too kind. Hey, my pleasure, man. Well, I mean, if you didn't have all those accolades, that interview, that uh, intro would have been a heck of a lot quicker. <laughs> would have made my job a little easier, but that's all right. I'm, w I'm willing to blow a, a, little, a few more syllables out just to give people an appreciation for who you are before we get started. So why don't we start off with, uh, speaking of letting people know who you are, maybe just share a little bit about your journey, how you got started in uh, the restaurant game and how you got to be what you are now, a celebrated expert in teaching restaurateurs and business owners alike how to excel at marketing in general and profitability in particular. Give us a bit of your story. Well, it was about 23 years ago when I first got into the restaurant business and uh, Many people know that when I started, I had no restaurant management or really restaurant experience. I bartended a couple of events in college, but you know, I really didn't know the first thing about restaurants. And then I went on to earn an MBA, and the, with, I guess the differentiator for my success was I applied business skills to a business which traditionally isn't run by MBAs. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I was able to succeed in a very high risk, high fail business simply by creating systems and applying that business knowledge and really treating every guest like they were the most important customer in my restaurant and training my staff to do the same thing. So that's really where the, where the whole thing started. So 23 years ago, I moved to this ski resort in a small town in Maine, and it was a really large ski resort, small town. And every single winter, I noticed that all the businesses were just crushed with people because they literally, you know, even though they didn't offer particularly great products or service, they all succeeded in spite of themselves because there were just too many people in town on any given weekend and not enough business to support it. Therein lies the opportunity. I was actually interviewing at the ski resort for a marketing position, which I ended up getting. 
But it took the ski resort several months before they hired me, and that's when I kept going back on different interviews, and I wrote a business plan for this restaurant idea. It was based on a place that I had been to numerous times in Switzerland, and I always thought, you know, if you were to pick up this place in Switzerland and put it anywhere at any ski resort in America, the, the concept would just rock and roll. But here's the place to do it because this place really needs everything. There are only, you know, four or five restaurants. Like I said, there were lines out the door every night. There was virtually no competition. Here was the idea. And that idea not only, you know, worked, but it succeeded in a huge way. And then it led to three more restaurants. And that's sort of the story. And we can get into some of the greater details. Wow. What's interesting about your story, Roger, is... First thing that strikes me is you're not just a learner, you're an executor, you're an implementator. Uh, I don't even know if that's a word. We'll call it a word. That's called Doranese in case you're wondering. Implementator. I just made it up on the spot. You're an implement, implementer. You're, you take action. Is that a fair assessment? It is. Yeah, absolutely true. I mean, I got laughed out of so many bankers' offices because I was looking for a million-dollar loan with no experience in the restaurant. You know, and the first question you can imagine is, so how many bars or restaurants you ever owned or managed before? Well, I've never been in the business, but I got a great idea. Read this business plan and give me a million dollars. You know, you could see where that mm -hmm. was. Going. Yeah, and of course, you got all your friends and family saying, go get a real job and be realistic. And, you know, come on, you, you know, you got to think about practicality, Roger. Think about, you know, just getting a job, holding a job and just, you know, Stop thinking such lofty ideas. Get your feet on the ground. Be realistic. <laughs> but entrepreneurs and visionary business people, we don't think realistically. You know, we understand that if we want to be extraordinary, if we want extraordinary results, we can't afford to think like ordinary people think. And so I love that about you is that you're not just willing to dream big and think big. You're willing to act big and execute big. And that's obviously a big part of your success. I love the value you have on your staff. If I heard you right, you treated your staff as the most important part of your enterprise, taking care of them and treating them well. Did I hear you right on that? Yeah, and there's lots of you know great detail we can get into on that. I mean, the staff was really the backbone of the restaurant, which ultimately became my exit strategy. You know, I was able to train my staff to think like owners and to notice all the things my customers were going to notice. And I wanted them to see these things and fix anything that was broken before the customers, you know, saw it. Uh, mm -hmm. I always had a philosophy that the restaurant business or any business really is one of a thousand details. And even though you get 990 of those details correct, it's the 10 you miss that the guest or the customer always sees. And I trained my staff, uh, you know, to do that. And it just paid huge dividends over the years. I love that. Training them to not be reactive, but proactive, to not Absolutely. punch a clock trading time for money, but treat it like it's their own enterprise, take pride in it, and have an eye for the details. So, you know, we're just getting into your story, just yeah. finished talking about your story, and we're already starting to pick out some key distinctions, which, you know, they're not hard to find. I can see they're quite evident. So that's really, really great. So let's talk a little bit about a term that, uh, from what I understand is uh, a term you use often and it's a term that's I think perhaps a golden thread that's woven in uh, amongst a lot of what you teach and what you preach and it's internal marketing what do you mean by that what is internal marketing and how's it how does it relate to the local business owner who wants to take their business to the next level well in essence it starts with your staff and it starts with training your staff to be what I call a team players to become brand ambassadors for your business. And once that happens through recognition and rewards programs, through training, developing, nurturing, appreciating, all those things, like I said earlier, my staff had my back and it became my exit at strategy, then they in turn gave my customers such great experiences that then my customers became evangelists for my business and word of mouth in any small business is really you know the number one way to go it's the most powerful form of marketing it's your most cost-effective form of marketing 
You know, you can throw tens of thousands of dollars out the window on traditional advertising, radio, print, TV, but if you can train your staff to market your business for you, then ultimately your customers are going to market your business for you. So that's really the essence of internal marketing. And then it goes on to use, you know, whatever you can on the interior walls of your business to promote everything that's special, unique, exciting about your business, whatever it is. And then that becomes a reinforcer when your staff talk about it to the customer. That's all what internal marketing is about. And it's and it's cheap money. It's it costs you virtually nothing, but it has the greatest impact on your bottom line. It's interesting, you know, we're so prone to go ahead and step over that dollar, neglect that dollar, step over it, and pick up dimes with other things that just seem more expedient, like, you know, pay-per-click on Facebook or doing a mail drop or putting an ad in the newspaper or whatever it is that we think is the, you know, the smart thing to do in our specific category of business. And usually it's following the herd, doing what everyone else does, you know, so it ends up being kind of like marketing incest. Everyone's doing the same thing with ever decreasing results. Uh, but far few people think of how they treat their staff and how they train their staff as marketing. You know, you, this is not something we tend to connect the dots on. So I love the fact that you're connecting, taking care of your people, rewarding and recognizing them, training them, and turning them from lukewarm, kind of apathetic, disconnected ambassadors to rabid, emphatic, enthusiastic brand ambassadors who are really heart connected and soul connected and mind connected to the mission of the company and see it as you know an extension of themselves and are really all in committed and as we talked about earlier being proactive not just reactive and marketing the business for you i mean think about who better even if they're not in the sales department or the marketing department even if they're in their customer service department who better to market your business for you than someone who's fully all in committed loves the mission and loves the culture of the company loves how they're being treated loves the synergy and energy of the company and their enthusiasm and their delight and their their commitment just overflows into serving their clients at the highest level and the clients receive that they see it they appreciate it and of course it becomes this spiral of positivity this ripple effect of of goodness that uh turns into clients going out and becoming evangelists themselves is that kind of how it connects yeah, and then it goes as far as, you know, your staff are using social media to promote your business because it's fun, because it's a family, because it's a team, because it's great. You know, the next great big event that's happening or something special, and you don't have to ask them to do this. They're just doing it on their own authentically because they want everyone they know to come in and experience the fun that everyone's having. So, yeah, it's a really powerful formula. And it all starts from the top. You know, culture starts from the top. Everything rises and falls on leadership. This rarely does an extraordinary culture just pounce upon you. <laughs> rarely does it just unfold through happenstance. It, have you found that to be true? Absolutely good point, for sure. Yeah, it comes by purposeful intention from the and top down. Example, you know, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. It's like, I didn't just sit back and say, do this, do that. It's like, in the early days, I was in the trenches. You know, I was busting tables. I was answering the phone. I was doing takeout orders. I was delivering pizza. I mean, you name it, I did it in the beginning. And I continued to lead by example because I, I had this philosophy that no matter who you are, an owner, a manager, a dishwasher, it didn't matter. No one was too important to pick up a piece of paper on the ground or you know make sure that you fix something that's broken that the guest might see. It doesn't matter who you are. We're all part of the same team, which became this culture of hospitality and culture of family and teamwork and respect. And that just spoke volumes about the fun factor, the customer experience, and the cash register ringing every day. Yeah, and the fact that uh, it's never too late and it's never too small or insignificant to not just notice the 10 out of the 1,000 details that need to be rectified, fixed, changed, enhanced, improved, but to do something about it, to seize the moment, to take ownership of it, to take responsibility for it. And I love that culture, you know, to bring that into my mindset as an entrepreneur really inspires me because it's like everyone's all in. It's like the saying team stands for together. Everyone achieves miracles. I think that brings it even to more light. It makes it even more meaningful considering to cover all these details and to notice all these details. You need more than two eyeballs. You need everyone 
mm-hmm. on deck. And I love that you're bringing that to light. I love that that's a big part of your mantra and your mindset. So how do you practically do that though? Like, let's say someone's listening and they're like, yeah, dude, I love that. I love that idea. But how do I actually translate that in the trenches? Like what's one routine or ritual that a business owner could do on a, on a daily or weekly basis that could start to cultivate that kind of internal marketing to create a truly extraordinary success culture? Well, you know, there's so many ways we can answer that, but it really comes down to training. And we did some form of training every single day. I've always likened the restaurant business, but any business really to show business. You know, when your doors open for business, no matter, you know, what kind of business you're running, I don't care what it is, it's like the curtain going up and it's showtime and every one of your staff on the floor is really an actor or an actress on stage there to, you know, dazzle the public, show them a great time and differentiate your business from the competitor down the street. And that is a really powerful competitive advantage. So we did that every single day. And we called them pre-shift trainings because it could be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it didn't matter. But we focused on a key area of the restaurant or a key concept or hospitality, the teamwork thing. We shared stories because everybody eats out you know, from time to time. And you go out to other restaurants and when you're in the business, you have a tendency to sort of critique how the other guy does it. And sometimes that's a good experience and sometimes it's bad, but it's a real learning, you know? So you can do this to any business that you have. Shop your competitors and see what they're doing. See the experience they're offering their customers and then use it as a learning experience on what, you know, they're doing great, what they're doing wrong and share that information with your team. And it's like a team huddle before the Super Bowl or in the middle of the Super Bowl. It's like you got to do this stuff all the time just to stay on top of what your competitors are doing and in so doing you're giving your guests a great experience every table every time because it's about consistency and entertainment you know in the restaurant business anyway well I would go as far as to say it's about consistency and entertainment or if nothing else enthrallment yes no matter what business you're in you know we're in the fascination business we're in the wow business we're in the exceeding of expectations business screw Screw customer satisfaction. We're going for customer loyalty. Above and beyond. Right? Yep. It's called affinity. You know, when you create affinity with your customer, there is nothing more powerful where they feel like they are they belong to your business. You know, it's something that they need in their life because you fulfill something that they want to experience again and again and often and tell their friends and family about it. That's called affinity and that is super powerful and you're totally hitting the head right there. Yeah, and again, this doesn't happen by happenstance. It doesn't happen by default. It happens by design. So, you know, Roger's talking about doing this once per day or having a ritual of doing it daily. And certainly if you're able to do that, I would wholeheartedly concur and encourage you to do that. But most of you would probably benefit from even just doing it weekly. (laughs) Chances are, for most of you, that would be an advantage. That'd be an improvement. That would be pushing the ball down the court and you know, sharpening your proverbial sword a little bit more if you did it weekly, let alone daily. So decide what you're going to do for your ritual in terms of training and just do it. I personally, I don't do it daily with my companies. I do it weekly. I have a team huddle with the relevant uh, people in my different departments once a week. Friday's my my meeting day. And uh, we do trainings on, you know, once a week. But I would say if you can do it daily, up the ante and do it daily. If you could do it weekly, then do it weekly. Just do something, get a rhythm, get a pattern, a rhythm, a ritual that continues to ramp up results. That's the big idea. So let's now talk about unconventional, unconventional outside the box marketing. Everyone else is zigging, we wanna be zagging. So how can local business owners, Roger, use unconventional marketing tactics like strategic alliances, partnering with other companies uh, that are complementary to our own and leveraging their audience, their assets, their clout, their influence. Yeah, I did this really successfully for, you know, really a long, long time, many, many, many years. And it all started by recognizing that there were other businesses in my market area that weren't restaurants, they were ski shops, they were car washes, they were health food stores, movie theaters, whatnot. And I recognized that we could cross promote each other's business, send each other business, and thus benefit by it, by the influx of, you know, tourists that we had coming through the area. But you don't even have to be in a tourist town to do this. 
Get this, every day local prospects are searching for your products or services online and they're looking for someone they can trust. Are you capturing that business? How would you like to dominate the local search results with more five-star rate reviews than any of your competitors so you become the only logical, trusted choice? I call it Operation Domination. Download a free copy of our Ultimate Testimonial Toolkit now at mytestimonialengine.com forward slash domination. Again, that's mytestimonialengine.com forward slash domination and discover how to build your business at the speed of trust. And then taking that to the next level, again, um, focusing on, on the restaurant business, I actually printed up some coupons with a really, really powerful offer that was a loss leader for me. I mean, it was a very, in a, it was a cash cow essentially. And we had a very, very popular menu item that had high perceived value to the customer. We charged a good price for it, but it was nearly pure profit. And so I took a photograph of this, we put it on business cards, and then we had some really cool you know, marketing copy with the value of the item saying, absolutely free, come in anytime and get this absolutely free. And then I took it to 10 or 15 local businesses and I says, listen, I'm going to print up a whole bunch of these coupons and if you stamp the back of the coupon with the name of your business or however so I can track where it's coming from, I'll actually give you 10% back in trade at the restaurant that you can use any way you want. Your wife, you know, you and your wife can come in for dinner, you can use it for a staff party, it doesn't matter, it'll just accrue, I'll keep tracking it and just keep passing out the coupon. So it's a win-win for everyone. It's a win for your customer because they're getting something for free. It's a win for you because you're getting trade back at the restaurant and it's obviously a win for me. And how this whole thing played out, um, I found out that every one of these coupons that probably besides the cost of printing the coupons, the value of the item was less than a dollar. So I could afford to give these things away all day long, but the check average of the average check that came in from any of these businesses was closer to $90 that people would spend when they came in to get the free items. You can see the huge ROI on that investment. So mm -hmm. I'm making new friends with new customers. They're spending close to 90 bucks when they come in. These businesses are getting good trade back at the restaurant. And you know, I had some of these businesses that literally sent me $15,000 of new business over the course of that four month seasonal period. And I had, you know, 10, 15 of these businesses all passing out these coupons. That was the power of strategic alliances for me. That was just one really powerful marketing idea that worked just huge. And you could probably translate that idea no matter what business you have. Work with your fellow business owner. You know, I always encourage people to join your local chamber of commerce. Get to know the other businesses. Become their friends. Work together because I hate to use cliches, but, you know, the rising tide theory absolutely is true. Get to know. You know, be community-minded. Sponsor community events and work together so that everybody prospers. That's the power of strategic alliances. Wow. Did you guys hear that? There was so much marketing nectar in there. Let me see if I can start to pull in prize some of the key distinctions of what Roger just shared because it was golden. A few things. One of the things I, I picked out there, which is something we don't want to miss, is that he came up strategically with a loss leader that had, quote unquote, high perceived value, not to you, the business owner, but to the client, to the customer. Is that right, Roger? Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't want to just take, you know, one of the things that doesn't sell from whatever you, you know, offer and offer that as a loss leader. Just because like, you know, you got a bunch of inventory, you got to get off the shelf. It's been sitting there collecting dust for the last 10 years. That's not the idea. You want something that people are hot for what you got for. In other words, they love it. It's one of those things you give them a taster and they want more <laughs> and they start telling all their friends and they say dang if this is so good what else you got in store sign me up for more is that right roger absolutely true keep on rocking that thought it's it's exactly the way it worked yeah so the loss leader the bait is really mission critical in this equation the other thing that i love about how you set this up how you engineered this is that because the loss leader was so wicked awesome and because you made the offer so wicked awesome, being that it was free, I mean, it doesn't get any sexier than free. I don't care how long we remain in business. I don't care uh, if we push forward another millennium and it's now, you know, the year 3000, <laughs> you're still going to find 
free is the sexiest word in marketing. It always has been. It always will be. So taking a killer loss leader and making it free does two things. One is the company that's promoting it to their client or customer, they feel they look good by sharing the love and sharing the opportunity. It's like it makes them instantly look better because you're giving a gift away. Even though it's not them who's fulfilling it, it's coming from them. They're the gift giver. So they almost feel you know, naturally motivated, inspired, compelled to want to share the love because it's something cool, something awesome, and it's free. Did you find that to be true, Roger? It was absolutely true. Yeah. And then on top of that, if that wasn't enough, you also took things to a whole other level in terms of motivation power by giving them a trade credit, the business owner a trade credit of 10% of all the revenue that comes in uh, beyond the, you know, obviously the redemption of the coupon. And so the business owner and their spouse or their family could go in and redeem that anytime they want. And I'm sure that motivated several of them to go out there and be a whole lot more proactive and a whole lot more aggressive in getting those coupons out than they ordinarily would have had it just been something free to give to their clients. Did you find that to be true, Roger? Yeah, you know, I was really surprised because it took off so quickly. I was actually getting phone calls, hey, I need more coupons, and I had just passed them out like two days ago, you know? <laughs> it was crazy. And, yeah. and so I printed more, and I gave them more, you know, immediately because they were they, they totally embraced the program and it got even more powerful when they saw how fast they were accumulating trade. And we just gave them a gift card, you know, with a mag stripe on the back, and we would just keep reloading it with their additional value. And I'd drop it off saying, hey, you got another $500 to spend, you know, and their eyes would light up. Hey, I love going to your restaurant and just signing for it or just, you know, swiping the card. That's awesome. So that was a huge motivator. Yeah, it took off really fast. Yeah, and then another piece that is kind of hidden behind this uh, this whole delineation of the strategy, which almost goes without saying, but I think it's worth prying out, pulling out, and bringing to light, is the fact that you engineered your company you engineered your, your, your client or customer experience to be so extraordinary, so delightful, that $1 converted to $90 in a very short period of time. And so, in other words, they have a sample, they love the experience, they say, heck, let's see what else they got. Oh, I don't want just this, I want this, this, and this. So, and then of course, it's not just one time. The goal is to have frequency of purchase, to increase the number of customers, to increase the average transaction size, and increase the frequency of purchase. And when you give them an extraordinary experience, and if you, when you start to do the marketing and the mindset that we talk about in this podcast, then you start to strategically uh, do all those things. And you engineer your company to give the client an awesome experience. So you can turn $1 to $90, and you take the... Uh, experience that the business owner gets by using their 10% credit and now they're even more motivated to get more credit because they loved it so it's the spiral the circle of awesomeness that happens but it wouldn't happen if your service or product sucked right I mean if your service or product sucks there's not much we can do to help you all good marketing will do will speed up the rate at which the world finds out that you suck Right, <laughs> especially in the world of uh, TripAdvisor and Yelp reviews. So, absolutely, you cannot suck. You've got to take care of the fundamentals before you roll out any of these, you know, powerful marketing programs. Great point. All right, basics first, exotic second. Yeah. So, you also speak on increasing profitability, Roger. Uh, what are obviously that's the main, that's the the reason why we're in business. Sure, we might have a mission. Sure, we might really get a ton of emotional, psychic income, gratification from helping people. But at the end of the day, if we can't pay the bills, if we can't pay the mortgage, uh, if we can't keep the lights on, there's you know that's not sustainable. So profitability is, uh, as we would call it one of the fundamentals in business. We gotta get the profitability and a lot of local business owners struggle with that, having a profitable business. So what are some tips that you'd give our audience on taking more profit home at the end of the day? Well, you know, not everyone is a numbers person. I happen to be one and I'm a firm, huge believer in the power of financial systems. So if you don't know your numbers, find someone who does and figure out what your cost structure is in your business and tighten those costs. 
you know, in most small businesses, the biggest costs obviously are your cost of goods or, you know, what you pay for what you're selling and your labor costs. So you really need to tighten those up. And then once you have a really good handle on, you know, getting the best uh, cost and profitability in those two areas, then there's so many other efficiencies you can find in your business to save your company money. You know, I recommend that you shop routinely all of your suppliers for every product or service your company buys, everything from credit card processing to snow plowing to trash removal to cable TV and internet services, you name it, you've got a whole long list of costs um, every single month. You got to shop these around to get the best price on the quality that you expect, on comparable quality. And then let's go back to that cash cow idea. Every business needs to find its cash cows that the customers love and appreciate that are almost pure profit to sell to them and you just can't have too many cash cows in any business because it literally drives profit to your bottom line. And then, of course, you have to have a staff that is knowledgeable of the products and services that you're selling and to make suggestions that you know your customers will appreciate, will enjoy whatever you happen to be selling. So all those things really, you know, put dollars and dollars and dollars to your bottom line as opposed to pennies. You know, you really got to focus on your biggest expenses first and then find efficiencies across your operation. And that's really what my book was all about. You know, I wrote this book called Rock Your Restaurant. Some of the concepts will apply to any business, but essentially it's all about whether you're a numbers person or not putting financial systems in place to max your profits. Because let's face it, you're working so hard in your small business, your staff are working just as hard, you might as well be making as much profit as possible or else you're just spinning your wheels. You know, I, I do a lot of consulting in this business and I find so many restaurant operators that don't know what their what their numbers are, what they mean. They don't know what their most profitable items are. And, you know, again, they might have a busy restaurant and they're still not making any money and they're just wondering why. So some of the things we just talked about are some of the keys to increasing profits and not spinning wheels, but printing dollars and taking it to the bank. Bingo. And again, you didn't just happen to drift into these key strategic, uh, you know, deployments. You sat down. Chances are, if I would guess, my hunch is that you would take some time on a regular basis and reflect and think and journal and strategize. Is that yes. right? Yeah. And, you know, let's not forget inventory. Those of us that don't have service businesses, but we're actually selling hard products and Let's face it, you know, until you build your dreams team staff, the restaurant business is notorious for theft and abuses and all that sort of stuff. And until I cleaned up my operation in the beginning, I had that too. And stuff would walk out the door for a variety of reasons. So, you know, your cost of goods is super critically important. And you can't wait 30 days to take an inventory to find out that you're 10 points higher than where you should be because you just watch 29 days go by where you're losing money every day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that is a really, really important thing. Inventory, cost of goods, a daily break even. You should know what it costs you to open your doors no matter what your business is and if it makes sense to close any days if you can't come up with special promotions to drive extra business on those days you just might find out you're gonna lose less money by closing a day or two than actually being open and having all that overhead without any customers so all of these things really impact your profitability so if someone's a bit of a financial numb nut, let's say they never got an MBA, they're just, you know, ready, fire, aim, jump out of the nest, grow wings on the way down, and they're admittedly really weak in this area, where do they go to get help? I mean, obviously, there's books, there's audiobooks, there's podcasts, there's all kinds of resources, but uh, what would you recommend? Would you recommend they go to their accountant or what, what would be like their top three places that you'd recommend they go for help on this? Yeah, I mean, if you have a good CPA, he's not only going to give you, um, you know, monthly or weekly cost saving information and sort of give you a basic education in accounting. Even if you don't like numbers, you should still understand what those numbers mean. Don't just get a bunch of financial statements and throw them in a drawer. Ask your accountant to explain them to you. And they're simpler than you think. You know, that would be one idea. Uh, another idea, you know, the U.S. Small Business Administration has a program in just about any major area of the country. It's called SCORE, which stands for Service Corps Retired Executives, where you can literally sit down with retired Fortune 500 company execs that can literally coach you 
through the, the nuances and the trouble areas and the hurdles that you're experiencing in your business. And there's that word again, absolutely free, right? What could be better than taking advantage of a government program where you can get education, resources, and tools to help you run a stronger business? And then my third example would be whether you have a restaurant or not, you can get a copy of my book, Rock Your Restaurant. It's only $6.95, and it literally walks you through the basics of these accounting systems, these financial systems, really simplistically, and it actually includes turnkey automated spreadsheets that you can use to plug in your numbers into your business, whether it's a break-even, a cost of goods, an inventory, it's all there. And it's got audio tutorials that tells you what these numbers are, what they mean, where you find them, and how to use them. So it's that simple, really. There you go. If you don't know, now you know. As my mentor Jim Rohn would say, the book you don't read can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely worth a read. Do you have that book in audio book format, by the way? It's a downloadable PDF. It's not an audio yet. You can get, um, if you write to me, I can send you a hard copy. But right now for six ninety five, you get a downloadable PDF copy. But it gives you a special code so that you can get those spreadsheets and audios. Awesome. Well, since you're talking about it, how can people reach you? Let's say they really digged uh, your message, your energy, and it was, of course, this is just an appetizer. This ain't uh, the main course. If you want to get more of what Roger's got in store, you're going to want to reach out to him. So what's the best way for peeps to reach out to you, Roger, and get connected with you and get your book? Okay, so to get the book specifically, um, they can go to rockyourrestaurantbook.com. And that's the simple click and get it for six ninety five. If they have a specific business related question, small business question, I love you know just helping people out and answering questions and you know pointing them in the right direction, that sort of thing. If they just want to chat, um, my email is Roger R O G E R at restaurantrockstars.com. Obviously, restaurantrockstars.com is the URL to my website. You can kind of see all the other things that I have going there. Um, as you mentioned earlier, Dorn, I've got a podcast with uh, small business and restaurant related tips um, absolutely free you just give me your email address and you automatically get uh, that in your mailbox every week or you can subscribe to iTunes get it there um, yeah lots of free resources and information for business owners restaurant owners whatnot at restaurantrockstars.com well that's well, awesome Roger thank you for all the insight you've been sharing with us today I don't know about the peeps listening but I'm feeling more amped more jacked more juiced about getting out there being proactive being all in with my leadership and all in with my marketing and all in with my money management now that I've heard you and you uh, fan to flame the fire of my desire to go out there and win. So thank you for all that you brought to the table today. I appreciate you. So much fun. Thank you so much. Hey, my pleasure. Well, that's all for now, my friends. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Local Domination Podcast, your ultimate guide to get local clients fast. So if tips galore that help you soar is what you adore, know this, we've got more in store. <laughs> Remember, nothing happens without implementation. So in the meantime, in between time, go forth, engage. It's time for Operation Domination. <laughs>